I'm Danny Dyer, and this is the Real Football Factories International. I played Tommy Johnson in the film The Football Factory, which was all about football violence. Then I travelled the UK and met the real football firm. Now, I'm going international. Nine countries in two months. Around the hooligan world in 60 days. A whole new level of football violence. We'll be in riots. We'll get tear gas, chased, and even shot at. It's going to be quite a trip. This week on the International Football Factories, we've come to a country that, in terms of football and excellence, has no equal. But off the pitch, it's far from the beautiful game. We're talking about one of the most violent societies in the world, and if you put that in the mix with football fanaticism, you get a lethal cocktail. This is Brazil. <laughs> I've come to Brazil, a place that is arguably the most violent country in the world. The land of sun, samba and shootings. I'm going to meet the biggest firms from the biggest clubs along the length and breadth of the country. I believe in fighting, you know, nastily fighting. I'll meet hooligans who tell me that they're prepared to kill and be killed. I'm going to discover that football hooligans in South America's largest country are waging war with guns. And we'll witness that firsthand as we travel on a firm's bus that comes under fire. I'm starting my journey in Rio de Janeiro, the gun capital of the world. It's a city of 12 million people and it's stunningly beautiful but scarily dangerous. Of all the cities I've been to, Rio can easily claim to be the most violent. I came over here at the age of 29 thinking it's not as bad as, as people say it is. After the experience of 12 years, I can agree. It's not as bad as people say it is. It's worse. In 2005 in London, there was 175 murders. In the same period in Rio, there were 6,620. Rio's rich and poor live side by side. The shanty towns, which are known as favelas, can be found just a few streets from Copacabana Beach. Most people don't have much in Brazil, but there is one thing everyone does have. This is the most successful football nation on the planet. And walking around, you can't help but notice that the people here are football mad. They'll play anywhere. But the ultimate place to play over here is where I'm going to go first. If you're a football fan like me, you can't come to Rio and not visit one of world football's greatest meccas, the Maracanã Stadium. I was following in the footsteps of some of the greats of the game, literally. Not bad. Zico. The brilliant Zico. Beckham Bell, what's all that about? How's he rolled himself in with the great Brazilians? Just goes to show how many great players they were blessed with. The dressing rooms in America are. Socrates, I'm sure, had his old fires rubbed down here, you know what I mean? You know, Zico running about with his little tower. You know, not that I'm thinking of them sort of images, isn't it? Just think of the famous footballers that have had a pony in there. This is where you'd wait to go out in front of hundred odd thousand people screaming. This stadium holds the world record attendance for a football match. An incredible 200,000 people saw the 1950 World Cup final here. <laughs> Today, the Maracanã has been refurbished for the bid to host the 2014 World Cup and now holds just over 100,000. 
but behind the smart new exterior of Brazilian football lies a dark underbelly of violence. Supporters groups started to become popular in the 60s and 70s and are called seceders. They are effectively the club's firms, although not all members are football hooligans. But among their huge numbers, you'll find the hardcore. Olha, aqui no Brasil, a coisa começa a ficar feia, parecerem surgir as primeiras mortes e tudo. É, ali pelo final dos anos 70, começo dos anos 80. É como eu digo, não é muito diferente do que a gente vê é, ou a gente viu na Europa, que a gente viu certamente na Inglaterra. But football violence in Brazil has proven to be a whole lot worse than it ever was in England, and as extreme as it gets anywhere in the world. In the last 20 years, 70 murders have been attributed to football violence. Coming up, I'm heading into deepest Rio to meet one of the biggest firms. A bit worried, I must say. Jesus. I'm in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and I'm staying on Copacabana Beach. So this is Copacabana Beach in Rio de Janeiro. This is the Brazil everyone knows from the postcards. But I'm not here for this Rio. I'm here for the other Rio. The one you don't see on the postcards and travel brochures. I'm going to Vaz Lobos, which is one of the poorer neighborhoods to meet one of Flamengo's firms, the Red and Black Race. Vaz Lobo is a district on the northern outskirts of Rio, where you'll find the biggest firm of Brazil's biggest club. Flamengo are the most supported team in Brazil. It's estimated that they have a fan base of just 33 million. And Paulo is the president of the firm the Raça Rubro Negra, which means the red and black race. É, a maioria mesmo é aquela classe mais pobre, né, que é a torcedor do Flamengo, a pessoa que mora em morros, em favelas, em classe bem baixa mesmo, entendeu? Em bairros pobres aqui do Rio de Janeiro. Down the years, Flamengo's fans have gained a reputation for being amongst the most dangerous in the city. Here in Rio, there's a real fear of the fans of Flamengo. The Flamengo fans are quite capable of fighting amongst themselves if they've got no opponents to fight with. Usually the dangerous part about meeting the firms is actually meeting them, but today it's getting there in the first place. As we were driving, our fixer told us that the stretch of road I was on is known as the Gaza Strip. Either side of it are two of the most dangerous favelas in Rio. Rival drug gangs wage periodic battles and gunshots are exchanged across the road. Every year, hundreds of people are killed by stray bullets, caught up in the crossfire of gun violence. I hoped I wasn't going to be one of them. As if this wasn't bad enough, our driver then told us that we should stop filming and hide the camera, as hijack robberies on this road are not uncommon. I was glad when we finally reached our destination. So here I am, Vaz Lobos, right? Which is a which is a naughty part of town, you know. We're in we're in some naughty neighborhood here. Let me tell you that now. I've heard the stories about Brazil and they're all true, they're all true. We've been told about the camera, right? Apparently we're in good hands. I ain't met these boys yet. These are the Flamengo boys, this is their manner. These are top of the phone chain here, so they're going to look after us. I just want to get in there lively, you know what I mean? Let's take the walk. And then let's, I don't know if you can hear that. But I'm guessing, a wild guess, this is the gaff I've got to go. A bit worried, I must say. Jesus, the noise. Let me just add, this ain't even match day. Here we go. Away. 
This lot wouldn't even have to hit you. They'd drum you to death. What a welcome that is. What a welcome. Good on, man, man. I hate I'm going to firstly ask you, what does Flamengo mean to you? I'm proud of our life. O sentimento que tem pelo Flamengo é o mesmo sentimento que a gente tem pela nossa família nossa, pelo parente nosso. Um sentimento de amor muito grande. How often is there violence at Flamengo's games? É difícil saber que a torcida da raça rubro-negra vai para o estádio para torcer, para incentivar o Flamengo. Há casos, geralmente, em briga, cada um se defende do jeito que dá, né? But although the firms here like a tear up as much as anyone anywhere else in the world, the big difference here is that football violence is as likely to involve firearms as it is fists. Mas já foi feita de 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 forma melhor. Antigamente as pessoas se 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 batiam de frente e e e e brigavam, mas tudo na mão, entendeu? Sem covardia, sem arma de fogo, sem tocar. Hoje já está complicado. Hoje você as pessoas armam tocar. My time with Rasa had started with fun and samba, but by the end. I'd learnt about the extremes to which firms were prepared to go. This was a bit of a shock. I knew that there were lots of guns in Rio, but I didn't realise that the firms were getting armed for their battles. In the north of the city, you'll find Flamengo's bitter rivals, Vasco da Gama. And the fixture between these two is synonymous with violence. That's the big derby in Rio. That's the really big one. It's the one that most worries the authorities. Vasco's firm are called the Forza Joven, which means young force. Vasco Flamengo tem essa. É sempre uma final. Não importa o jogo, se é amistoso. Ganhar do Flamengo para a gente é sempre essencial. Se não ganhar aqui dentro, se ganhar lá fora. But although the city rivalries are intense, major problems also occur with firms from other parts of the country. Dentro no estádio a cobertura sai e se tocados e lá fora ficam muito vulneráveis. The biggest dangers don't come in their own city. It's when they have to negotiate trips into enemy territory, leaving their own state and heading into another one. Onde que as pessoas vai, vai atacar a gente? Que é na entrada logo na dúvida, quando a gente sai de São Paulo, já, já sabe que tem um pessoal esperando sempre a gente ali, entendeu? So traveling from Rio to Sao Paulo can be a dangerous trip for even the big Rio firms. The distances and costs involved in the traveling mean they don't go in such huge numbers, and so they're a target. Eu sou a dona Gigi. But who are these other firms from Sao Paulo? I was leaving Rio and heading there to find out. Sao Paulo is the largest city in South America. Population, 30 million. It looks and feels very different to Rio, but it too has its rich and poor living side by side. And it's another very violent city. city which is home to some very violent football hooligans. Sao Paulo's two biggest clubs provide its two biggest firms and biggest rivals. Corinthians firm is the Gavios de Fiel or the Hawks of the Faithful and Palmeiras's is the Mancha Verde which means the green stain. Palmeiras is one of Brazil's most successful football teams and the green stain are one of the most infamous firms. This is Janio. He's the current president of the Green Stain. And as you can see, he can handle himself. He's an expert in the martial art of my attire. I think that you have a part physical, that you have an advantage great over the others. It's good because in the art of martial arts, you have to learn discipline, the respect to the master, the respect to the professors, the respect to the superiors, let's say that. E aí isso acaba passando para a torcida. Giannio e seus amigos estão esperando para me encontrar eles no HQ. 
Now, this is the firm that were involved in one of the most serious incidents of football violence in the history of the game. One that occurred at a junior football match back in 1994. This riot against Sao Paulo involved a pitched battle in which iron bars, lumps of wood and rocks were used as weapons. A hundred fans and 22 policemen were injured and one person was killed. To meet them, I've been told I must adhere to their strict dress code. Now, I've been told that absolutely I cannot wear any black, yeah? Gotta wear green. Now, I've been running about all over the world. Look at the state of me, I'm bearded out. I'm struggling for a pair of pants at the moment. You know, let alone a green top. I've, I've dug this whole thing out. I hope they don't mind me green top being, you know, a bit creased. Well, ah, I'm starting to understand the green a little bit now. Get on that. This is the green stain here. Think about it in Brazil, they're very blatant about it, they're very open. I mean, look at the, you know, this on the wall saying, look, we're proud of it. Anyone driving past, any old build, don't matter, this is where we'll be. You want to nick us? Come here. Let's have a flop in here. Come. First of all, would you say that you are the toughest supporters in Brazil? I think we're the only one in the world, not in Brazil, the world. Our team started exactly to change a, a, a história de que a torcida do Palmeiras, então nós já nascemos batendo em todo mundo e até hoje continua assim. Eu acredito que a nossa torcida no mundo é difícil encontrar uma outra que bate de frente com a gente. How many members are prepared to fight for the club? Todos. A gente acredita que todos que estão aqui na nossa diretoria, todos que estão à frente da torcida, estão Estão dispostos a tudo, né? bater, matar, morrer. Fazer... Já que a gente abandona a família, abandona o emprego, abandona tudo para seguir o nosso clube e, nós... e defender a nossa bandeira. Então, todos aqui são perigosos, desde que você mexa com a gente. Ok, ok. Eu queria saber sobre a sua política de armas. Os armas são usadas aqui comumente. E então, onde eles estão no assunto? A gente é contra a arma de fogo. Lógico que a gente também, em determinados lugares, a gente vai, a gente sabe que que lá tem no Rio é um exemplo e lá eles não têm muita coragem de brigar na mão. É muito fácil se atirar a 100, 200, 300 metros de um adversário e matar ele. Agora trocar porrada com ele 10, 5 minutos é meio complicado. E é isso que a gente gosta. And Leandro has the scars to prove it from the many battles he's fought in his eight years with the firm. Aí eu tenho essa aqui. Nós encontramos com eles no metrô voltando de uma festa. E foi tipo 20 contra 20, diretoria contra diretoria. Aí ficamos brigando pelo menos uns 40 minutos. Essa aqui foi a bomba da polícia. E aqui foi uma pedrada contra o Corinthians também. No Morumbi, trocando socos. Aí eu olhei pra cima assim e veio uma pedra. E demais aqui, ó. Acho que não dá pra ver, dá pra ver? Tem várias aqui do São Paulo. Também tenho essa aqui de bomba. Nós estávamos enfrentando uma torcida do Flamengo. Mas isso tudo pelo amor a Palmeiras e a Mancha Verde. And this was a first for me. Rafa is Mancha's very own tattooist. Members of the firm don't have to pay for tattoos. They're done on the ass. Hi, Danny. God. Yeah. I'm loving this. I mean, it's a proper outfit, you know what I mean? It's proper. This guy is an artist. He's got a few tattoos. Do you want to show us a few of your tattoos? Get on the Jimi Hendrix there. <laughs> My mother. Mother. Yeah. And the goalkeeper of Palmeiras. I believe it in Rudigan. He's been a fighting. Yeah. You know, nastily fighting. Yeah. But we hate to whip on arms. We hate him. But you just want to stand up and just. Fight. Yeah, you love what a that. dream of us, yeah. fighting off Rudigas, fighting off yeah. English yeah. boys. Yeah. But in Brazil, no. it's the end. We are the, the last, last. The, the last. last. And I believe in a, a fighting of a man, an honor, a pride, the football team, the, the honor of Palmeiras, the honor of Mancha Verde. Just that real raw pride. They want to fight for their club. And I can see it in every single one of their eyes, you know? 
Ele é esse rapaz aqui, ele está na praia com os amigos. This is 23 year old Diogo Borges. Aqui quando ele era jovenzinho empinando uma pipa. In 2005, Diogo died of massive hemorrhage after being shot in the back by a Corinthian. His father, Marcus, like his son, is also a member of the Green Stain. E eu tive de falar pelo telefone que ele tinha morrido, né? Foi uma coisa assim que você falar para a mãe do seu filho que ele morreu é não é fácil, é muito triste, sabe? E aí ele era assim, ele era como se fosse dois amigos. Eu vim aqui na mãe, você pode ver que todo mundo gosta de mim. Ele nunca teve vergonha de andar comigo. A gente desfilava na escola de samba, a gente ia para festa. Então eu não perdi só um filho, sabe? Eu perdi assim um amigo muito grande. Essa correntinha que ele tem, que ele sempre usou, que é o manchinha, que ele não tirava, sabe? Então isso aqui é uma coisa que eu fico com ela para me sentir ele perto de mim. Diogo isn't the first member of the firm to be killed. This is Cleo, the first president of Mancha. He too was shot, also by Corinthian fans. Os Cleo vinha saindo da sede à noite, 8, 9 horas da noite. Chamaram ele dentro de um carro, quando ele olhou, deram dois tiros nele, ele acabou morrendo. Então foi um cara que mostrou para nós o valor que tinha o Palmeiras, o valor que tinha a torcida do Palmeiras e que a gente precisava, se precisa da vida por ela. Entendeu? Então ele virou. Ele virou, vamos supor, virou um Martin da torcida do Palmeiras. Eu nunca tinha visto uma firma que falava sobre martyrs dying por causa de seguir um time de futebol. O que me struck me about these lads was that despite the fact that members of the firm, their mates, had been killed in what they saw as the line of duty, they had no fear about carrying on. As I left wearing the shirt they'd given me as a gift, I wished them well. I hoped that none of them would go the same way as their two dead friends, but that was probably unlikely. My next appointment in Sao Paulo was with the green stained sworn enemies, the hawks of the faithful. And after the break, I'm gonna meet them. I'm in Sao Paulo, Brazil, home to two of the biggest football rivals in the country, Palmeiras and Corinthians. This is one of their games, and as you can see, it's a fairly heated affair. And these are the players. Imagine what the fans are like. I'd already met Palmeiras' firm, and now I'm going to meet the Corinthians' firm, the Hawks of the Faithful. The Hawks take part in the annual carnival, and every Friday, they rehearse in a huge hangar. Now they're quite unique, this firm. They've got their own samba school. It's about one o'clock in the morning, mind. This is how we've got to meet them, you know what I mean? Ain't no early birds, these little lot. Now, me, samba school, I think, you know, being taught how to play a drum, no, it's a right proper rave up. I don't know if you can hear that. It's all kicking off in now. It's pretty mad, this. This is a mad way of celebrating the club you support. It's like a big rave up for the Corinthians, you know what I mean? It may look like fun and games, but the Hawks are also a very dangerous firm. In the mix of all this, there's a few nutters, you know what I mean? A few in the hardcore. This is the Hawks fighting with the Sao Paulo police at a game in June 2006. Outside the hangar, I met up with their president. This is Porginia, which means little flea. He's the head of the Hawks and was keen to stress their ideology. História de 37 anos, a maior torcida organizada que nós reconhecemos como a maior torcida organizada da América Latina. Não conhecemos outro trabalho diferente e maior que o nosso. Primeiramente nós como considerados a 
maior torcida organizada do país. Aqui temos uma responsabilidade de tratar a violência com a pauta. E nós temos uma filosofia, mas com outra dentro da realidade, que os gaviões não agem, os gaviões reagem. But when they're an estimated 65,000 members of your firm, you can't control everyone. Away from the eyes and ears of the president, I spoke to some of the foot soldiers, like the Green Stain Boys. These lads had a certain glint in their eye. Somos nós, nós somos nós e os inimigos que se cuidem, porque se mexer com nós, nós vamos quebrar pescoço, nós vamos cortar pescoço, nós vamos passar por cima de tudo que qualquer tipo de inimigo nosso. Ah, tipo, depois do jogo, marca tal horário no terminal, aparece todo mundo no terminal e já era. Pau, pedra, rojão, consegui, nós leva. É, rojão a gente leva no, no busão. E pedra, pau, a gente pega no caminho. É, a gente fica com receio às vezes, né, mas naquela hora que o sangue quente vai todo mundo pra cima, não pensa nisso. Fica, tipo, isso fica em segundo, segundo plano pra nós. I asked him if he had to kill someone, would he be capable of it? Com certeza, matar pra não morrer. Com certeza. Ah, vindo dos caras de lá, vindo dos inimigos, não sinto nada. What I was hearing over here was pretty frightening, and I was beginning to realize that for some, life is cheap. The people I was meeting weren't phased by the prospect of killing or being killed. E é evidente. É, que numa sociedade em que hoje você tem o acesso fácil que você tem às armas, às drogas, né, e aí incluído o álcool, isto tudo é potencializado por essas facilidades. The problems of football violence in Brazil are exacerbated by the huge social and economic problems the country faces. Football violence is not the biggest fish the authorities have to fry. So hooligans here are not dealt with as strictly as they are in the UK. E se fez muito pouco e se tem feito muito pouco do ponto de vista da legislação uh, para uh, uh, resolver o problema. À medida que não tem punição, à medida que não tem identificação, não tem repressão, piora. I've seen how bad the problems were in Rio and Sao Paulo, but what's the situation like in the richer parts of the country? I was heading to Porto Alegre, which is a thousand miles south of Sao Paulo, and is one of the more affluent areas of Brazil. There are two teams in this city, Internacional and Grêmio. A couple of teams that I'm not too familiar with, yet Internacional are the current world champions and Libertadores cup holders. They are the only two teams in this city, which makes the rivalry even more intense. Gremio were formed by German and Italian immigrants, while Inter was started by visitors from Sao Paulo who were excluded from joining Gremio and were derogatorily dubbed the Monkeys. Inter's firm are known as the Camisa Doze, which means 12 shirts. Miguel is the president of the firm, which is proud of its heritage. Tem, tem muita história, ah, porque o Colorado é macaco, não sei o que. A gente assume essa aí, a gente, se a gente é um macaco, a gente vai ser o macaco mais bonito, o macaco mais forte, o, o macaco mais peleador. Não tem, não tem, não tem problema nos chamar assim. As in Rio and Sao Paulo, guns play a big part of football violence in Porto Alegre. Tivemos um, um pequeno desentendimento com o pessoal do Grêmio ali. E quando eles viram que ficaram ruim para eles, aí começou o tiro, também tiro no braço, mas até tranquilo. E mesmo com armas correram, não ficou ninguém para nada. O futebol nos leva a isso. O Inter nos leva a isso, a defender as cores do clube até o fim. E por aí a gente dá vida. Se tiver que matar, a gente mata. Se tiver que morrer, a gente morre. Cara, é tua mãe ligando. É sério? É tua mãe ligando. Mamãe? Eles mamam. Ah, minha mãe, ó. Mamãe. <laughs> Gremio's firm is called the Geral de Gremio, which means Gremio's Terrace. And one of their top boys is Alamal. É uma nossa maior rivalidade. Nossos inimigos mortais. 
This is the derby game from June 2006, where trouble at the Gremio end started long before kickoff. Eu nunca tinha visto, cara. Eles fizeram para provocar nós. E a torcida do Grêmio tava trocando pedra dentro do estádio para a torcida do Inter. A torcida do Grêmio invadiu a parte do Inter, rompeu os alambrados. Aí nisso já estava acontecendo confusão do outro lado. The game had to be suspended twice because of the fighting. Gremio's firm didn't appear to be too happy with the toilet facilities. Ali embaixo, ali onde foi tocado, os banheiros foram, foram arremessados ali. Not content with throwing them onto the pitch, they then set light to them. Não, eles foi levado até aqui e daqui eles tocaram para baixo e colocaram fogo com com bomba. And here are Grêmio's Geral firm today, match day. It's Sunday afternoon, and they're playing Flamengo. I'm off to meet the firm that consider themselves different from most Brazilian torcedas. Porto Alegre is part of the state called the Rio Grande do Sul. The people here want to be independent of Brazil, especially those in the Geral. Unlike all the others, they don't have their own uniform. There's no samba, but they do like a drink. Então vamos colocar três coisas. Futebol, briga, defender o seu time e álcool. O Grêmio é mais importante. Mas o Grêmio, acompanhado de uma boa, uma boa cerveja e quebrar os colorados corintianos também é muito bom. I'm here to meet Gremio's firm, they're called the Geral de Gremio. Now, I've been told that they're quite unique to other firms here in Brazil because they don't identify with the typical Brazilian torcedas. You know, if anything, they say their style's a bit more English, which I think's a big call. The first thing that Gerald showed me were the trophies they'd stolen from their enemies. I'm going to explain a little bit about what's going on here. Obviously, this, ain't, this isn't their colours. This is Flamengo, yeah? Now, what they like to do is they like to, they like to nick things off of them, yeah? I don't know how they do it. I don't know whether they beat them and then take them, but basically, this is just their little trophies, you know? There's loads of them, look, loads everywhere. Now, I don't know whether they're going to burn this shit or what. I don't know, but... Mas 20 pessoas, 20 gremistas pegaram, cruzaram, cruzaram. Vamos lá, a faixa popular tá lá, vamos roubar, vamos roubar, vamos roubar. Entramos com faixa, revólver, faca, facão, armado e chegamos, cara, ó, me dá, só quero a faixa, não quero, não quero roubar nada, não quero te roubar, não quero te soltar, não quero te soltar só quero as faixas, só as faixas. A gente foi lá, pegou as faixas, cara, não, pode levar, pode levar, pode levar, que isso, pode levar, que isso aí nós vamos roubar de volta de vocês. Eu falei, se vocês vieram, vocês vão morrer, vocês vão morrer, não tem, só queremos as faixas. Eu não uso armas. Nós não precisamos usar arma. Nossas armas são essas. Para nossos inimigos, isto, ódio, ódio. An hour before the game, and amid the chaos, I managed to slip into a side alley and speak to Alamau. Now, everywhere I've been in Brazil, I've seen drums, drums, samba. Where are yours? O Grêmio é diferenciado por isso, pelo seu povo. O nosso povo tem uma a gente não é separado ter territorialmente, mas a gente é, é separado culturalmente. How important is Grêmio for you? O Grêmio é uma religião, o Grêmio é minha vida. Sem o Grêmio eu não sou ninguém. O Grêmio é nossa vida. A gente faz tudo pelo Grêmio. A, por exemplo, a mulher que quer namorar comigo, se casar comigo, ela vai, ela tem que ter a noção de que hoje eu estou namorando ela, amanhã eu estou em São Paulo vendo o jogo do Grêmio. Se a minha namorada hoje, ela, ela tem que saber que hoje eu não volto para casa, meu, ganhando ou perdendo. Eu vou beber com o pessoal aqui, todas, 
Só que no final eu vou, eu vou comer ela. It was time to head to the stadium. Get in the mix again. Thankfully, I was surrounded by members of the Giral. Couple of right lumps right around me. I was given a Grêmio shirt to wear, and then it was into the fray. taking me bang into the middle of the terrace. I felt a bit like Moses as the firm parted the fans like the Red Sea. It was as hot and noisy as any end I'd been in, and the wall of sound was constant for the whole first half. I was nervously trying to keep an eye on events on the pitch because when Gremio score, the Giral has a mental celebration. Right, listen, it's just before half time, I've had to come out of there, right? Out with the Gremio, I was in there, I've got a feel for it. The reason I've come out is because of this avalanche. Avalanche, you think, snow, no snow. We're talking about geezers running down 100 mile an hour when they score. So we've just had to slip out, go into the safe bit, the, the, the press bit. You know, just for our own safety, to be fair. And I want to see it from afar. I do not want to be in the mix of that when it kicks off. Oh, come on, man. They're lunatics, this Gremio. Sure enough, ten minutes into the second half and Gremio scored. Cue chaos. Gremio ended up winning the game 3-0, and the victory meant that they qualified for the Libertadores Cup, the South American equivalent of the Champions League. But it's not been the happiest end of the season for all the firms. Back in Sao Paulo, the last game for the Green Stain is a very different proposition. They're going to Rio for a meaningless game, but a far from meaningless journey. After the break, we'll be with them on the trip which ended in dramatic fashion. Sao Paulo. It's seven o'clock in the morning, outside the headquarters of the Green Stain, and they're preparing for the last away trip of the season. They're off on a six-hour coach trip to Rio. The bus was supposed to be full, but not everyone has shown up. The Green Stain's ink man, Rafa, is disappointed. Of course, we disappointed again. The match in Rio is always dangerous. The last match is not important and ninguém veio, nobody's come to real. You wouldn't find Rafa missing the bus. Ask his sister. On the day of her wedding, he wasn't there to toast the bride. He'd gone to see Palmeiras in a pre-season friendly. She's just very upset. And all my family in wedding. Rafael! Where's he? Oh. He's going to the map from Palmeiras with the team of second division. <laughs> Shit. Mancha and family haven't mixed well for Rafa. The mother of his daughter left him after she told him it was them or the firm. She is not happy. She's fear and go and took my daughter. She's name is Adora. It's hard, man. I'm suffer, but the mancha's running my veins. It's not very different from an English coach trip. Drinking, lads messing about, and of course a little sing-song.
but danger lies ahead. As the coach approaches Rio, the mood changes. Rival firms may lay in wait to ambush the bus, the green stain of a target, but not from today's opponents, Fluminense. The problem with the Fluminense fans, our problem today is the Botafogo fans. They've been given a chilling warning from their Rio rivals. They promised I should in us. With two hours till kickoff, they arrive safely at the Maracanã. Leader Janio arranges their entrance to the ground with the police. The game itself is the anti-climax everyone expected. There was nothing to play for in the game, and the green stain weren't looking for a fight. They just had to be there for the team. Now they face a tense six-hour trip home, which is going to be more dangerous than the one coming here. All the other firms know where they are. There's only one road out of Rio to Sao Paulo, so there's real danger. They're getting a police escort out of the city because this season they've already been shot at twice. The bus is silent, the tension is palpable. After 15 tense minutes, the coach reaches the Rio city limits and the police escort leaves. The police is go. Starts now the possible problem. With the police gone, they've now got a different kind of protection. The bus is driving at breakneck speed and everyone is on the lookout. But as they get further out of Rio, the mood changes and any danger appears to have passed. Then... It appears that Botafogo have kept their promise. Three shots have been fired at the bus from a car. Fuck off, Rooligans! In Brazil, is a fucking problem, man! The car is still following the bus, and if necessary, they will return fire. The car is near, be careful. Guys, punch and kicks in Brazil. Shut it, shut it, shut it. Fuck. Amazingly, nobody's been hurt, but it was a little too close for Rafa. My window, my window. I'm in state of shock now. I almost died. In one season, Mancha have now been shot at three times. And up and down the country, there will be countless other incidents like this one that won't even be reported to the police. The war between the firms in Brazil shows no signs of abating. There will yet be more self-proclaimed martyrs who die for the cause. I was going to die. And don't see my daughter.
On the very next trip the Greenstein made to Rio, they were attacked once again. Their convoy of 12 buses came under sustained gunfire from a number of cars. One of the bus drivers was shot in the arm, and Alessandro Camillo, a 28-year-old father of two, was shot in the head and was critically injured. <laughs> 